Hello, everyone. So great to be here. Um, Scott Zakheim, General Partner at Landmark Ventures. Uh, I run our digital tech practice. So if you're an enterprise digital marketer and you want to talk shop, please reach out. And if you are an emerging uh, digital tech company, we'd love to uh, chat as well and how we can uh, make your business grow. Uh, this is a, an exciting moment for me, one of the coolest interviews I've ever done, uh, welcoming Omri uh, to join us on stage. Uh, he's an Israeli legend, um, and I want to preface the interview by uh, telling everyone what he's done. The guy played uh, 10 seasons in the National Basketball Association, was the first ever first round pick from Israel, first Israeli to ever play in the NBA, earned a championship ring uh, with the Golden State Warriors. Uh, he's also a two-time Israeli league champion, and now he's back in Israel playing for Maccabi. Um, Omri, it's great to have you. I, I did want to um, share one thought, which will lead into my first question. Um, I wanted to recognize David Stern. Uh, he passed away last year. He was a frequent guest of Landmark Events, um, someone who I had a chance to get to know a little bit. Critical, obviously, in, in globalizing the NBA and bringing the game of basketball to a, a young Omri Kospi. Uh, Omri, in thinking about David and his legacy um, in the over a year since he's passed now, can you share the uh, you know effect that he had on your life uh, as a full star? First, first of all, thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. Um, um, I'm really excited to be here and happy to be here. Um, David was a dear family friend. Um, you know, as a young NBA fan uh, growing up in Israel, um, he was the first to really globalize the game, like you mentioned. Um, NBA games were, weren't televised before, you know, his time with the NBA and that in the early 90s, that's when it started for, for all of us. So obviously, big idol for me. Uh, I remember my draft night when in 2009 when David came to the stage, it was 4 a.m. in the morning and he had a small smirk and a smile on his face. And, and I know it meant a lot to him and, and me and him chatted about it a little bit after. Uh, just because he has so many friends around the world and in Israel. Uh, he's always been a, a great friend of our, of our country of Israel, um, very dedicated to the game of basketball and everything that's been going on here. He's done so much nonprofits, organizations, and um, the peace players and, and, and all sorts of games with the Israeli and Arab community and the Jewish community here. Um, so just a, just a sad year. I, I love David. Um, and obviously he laid down the foundation to, to many of the players we see today playing at, at that state, right? Like Luka Doncic and, and some other guys really coming into the NBA and, and, and crushing it uh, night in and night out. So uh, he's a big, uh, big, big part of, of the NBA family. Um, so I, I was looking at your schedule before we, uh, we jumped on and you're a busy guy. So, so tell us how your season has gone during COVID, under the protocols, for everyone who's listening in, um, Omri is on his way to Lithuania for a EuroLeague game tomorrow. He had practice this afternoon. Um, tell us about what the season's been like in quarantine and now out and all that stuff. It's been uh, it's been unique, obviously. First time for all of us as players to be quarantined at home, uh, not able to go out with even walk our dogs out uh, in order to stay in this, what they call the bubble. Uh, it's a little bit different than the NBA bubble, but essentially um, staying away from everyone else and, and kind of trying to keep everyone safe playing basketball. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, me and you talked a little bit earlier, it, it's very important for us as players that we have the opportunity to shed some light uh, into the this crazy situation. Uh, we know there, there are many people sitting at home with no job and, you know, somewhat depressed and, and it's totally reasonable. So we've had the opportunity to go out and compete and play basketball and kind of put a smile on their face, whether it's people at home or some of the stuff we did at, as with foundations into even kids in hospitals, you know, they, they got us in quarantine in a hospital and they can't see their doctor. Obviously everybody covered up and masks and all that sort of stuff. So for us as, as, as athletes, this is a privilege to, to play the game and um, to put smiles on people's faces. Obviously it's not ideal. It's not fun to play with no fans out. It's literally like eating food with no salt. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. some, some people put it, um, but at the same time we, we go out, we compete, um, and, you know, suddenly, you know, not suddenly, but now we starting to see the light in the end of the tunnel. Israel has done amazing with vaccinations. Our whole team been vaccinated pretty much. Wow. Fans are coming back into the arenas. So that's great. 
So uh, I want to get to the boardroom piece of this and, and hear about what you're doing on the investment side. But uh, while I have sure. you, I got to ask you some some basketball questions. I'm a big fan. Um, sure. So you played 10 years in the league. I want to hear just your first, holy crap, I'm in the NBA moment. What was <laughs> that that like you'll always remember when you realize like you're really here? Rookie year, Boston Celtics playing us at home. Uh, one thing I always hated, and I still do, when when someone shoots a free throw and you got to box him out and you got to be the first one in, right? There's always like yeah. a big center. Back, back then, the game was a bit different too. They used to play with two big centers. Yeah. And I'm going to my position and I need to box out. And I'm looking to my left and I see Kevin, Kevin Garnett. And KG, <laughs> you know, he's always been a trash talker and very, you know, intense player. So I see him and I look at him. And I can't, I, even my dad asked me after the game, was like, you were so struck. What happened? Why did you look at him like that? And he started making these noises like he's about to, you know, eat me up and eat me alive. And I'm not over there, 20, 21 years old. And KG is <laughs> making all these noises. And I'm like, I got to box this guy out. And this is KG. Um, but then, you know, it was Ray Allen on the line. So thank God he, he made both free throws. Yeah, he made them. Uh, I, I had had nothing to worry about. Uh, but then, you know, this this is what it is. You know, the NBA is is you got to play. You, you're playing and it's, a you know, an honor to play against the best player night in and night out. And, you know, on a back-to-back, you can play the legendary, obviously, may rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. And it's just, uh, it just a, a great, a great time to, to play the game. So cool. All right. So I have to show you some show and tell. This is my son's Wizards Denny jersey. Wow, I love it. I love it. What what does that mean to you that there are now Israeli basketball players following in your footsteps, playing in the league, and I and I know that you are their role model. Oh, I love it. I couldn't be happier. Um, I think you know many thoughts are coming through my mind when I see this jersey. Obviously, a big pride, and and obviously, kind of passing the torch in, in a sense to Danny for him to represent the, Israel, the Israeli basketball. If I had a small piece of, of Israeli kids dreaming, uh, whatever it is, right? What You know, I always, my thought process and my thesis was always work hard, uh, work smart, be humble, and good things will happen to you. And if I had a small piece in him making it to the NBA, you know, I'm, I'm more than honored. Um, you know, it reminds me a little bit of, you know, my jersey with the Kings in a sense, right? Uh, this is a team that he's always going to remember, the team that drafted him, the first, you know, practice, training camp, first NBA game, first, you know, preseason, et cetera. So, you know, these are memories that, you know, will last forever. Um, so, you know, there's a long way to a long way to go. Um, this is somewhat, you know, like real life. You, you got to compete. You, you know, there's ups, there's downs, there's there's a night that the ball just doesn't fall and things don't go your way um, and, and stuff like that. So you learn all of that. And in, in obviously in the first year uh, in the NBA, but uh, I'm really excited for him. I talked to him a lot, uh, try to obviously give him his space as well. Uh, but at the same time, it, you know, I feel like I wish I had someone to kind of walk me through the NBA and what right. is it like going on, you know, East coast, you know, road trip or West coast. Trip yeah. And, what it's like playing in the league. So really happy That's for so him cool. and uh, excited for him. So one last question, we'll get into business, but um, sure. I, I remember reading and seeing the story um, when you were on the Warriors and um, you were not put on the playoff roster. Steve Kerr made it a, a thing to go to the media and sing your praises and talk about how great a person you are, how much you meant to the team and how much your contributions were, were critical to their success that year. And then I read in, in a follow-up that um, the Warriors then gave you a, a ring, a title ring for your efforts. Can you talk about what that meant to you in terms of Steve Kerr as a person and him going out of his way to talk about you and your contributions? First, I really appreciated it, you know, when he did talk. Um, that's it's uh, It meant a lot to me at the time. Obviously, you were in the high of your career. You were a week away from NBA playoffs, a couple of months, you know, two months away from hopefully winning a championship. Obviously that team was, was destined to win. Um, but, you know, Steve, there's a story I always tell, a small anecdote, you know, that some of the things that Steve does behind this, everybody knows Steve, he goes on, on TV many times and interviews, et cetera. But there, there was a, a small, a young, young man from Israel that was, um, had cancer and and you know, the doctors didn't give him much time to live unfortunately and his biggest dream was to come and meet the warriors he was a big warriors fan so the family from israel came over 
I told that to Steve and said, Steve, you know, there's a special situation. Would you consider them coming to practice? And he looked at me and I'll never forget. He was like, it's not even a question. We'd love to have him. Right. And, um, he brought, we brought him into practice. Steve brought him down to the floor level. Usually the families, everyone stayed some sort of a balcony. So we brought him to the, to the floor level. They watch practice. Think about it. Steph, KD, Clay, Draymond, all these guys. Right. And, you know, I remember the picture after practice that Steve went out and, and talked to the, obviously the young man and his mom. Uh, and the mom had tears in her, in her eyes, right? And the next day we had, we had a game. He upgraded their tickets. He hosted them at the VIP family lounge. Wow. Um, he made sure that a couple of players came out and talked to, to the young man. Uh, I remember Clay bringing him signed shoes. So all these different things, this is really, you know, to me, resemble who Steve is, right? Um, so unfortunately, the kid passed away two or three weeks after the trip. Wow. But, Sorry um, to hear that. I'm sure he had uh, he had a trip of a lifetime, and Steve made yeah. it possible. He's just an amazing person. So cool. Okay, so pivoting to the boardroom piece. Um, Let's do it. Uh, yeah, word is going around that, that you're doing some pretty neat uh, entrepreneurial work, some investing potentially with other NBA stars. You got a great platform here. Uh, a lot of folks, 5,000 plus around the world listening, and they want to know what, what Omri is up to and investing in. And uh, so tell us about it. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, our family office, uh, we started our family office about two, three years ago. Uh, and I was very, I always follow the cannabis world as, as a whole from, from somewhat afar. Um, uh, you know, the situation and obviously an active NBA player investing and being involved in the industry whereas, where it wasn't always as it is today. Um, right. But the, one of the first calls I called the commissioner, uh, Adam, and kind of the, the player association, and they gave me their blessing. But essentially, I look at it, you know, that, you know, the cannabis industry is, is, is just unique. There's there's many aspects of it from, I think, a pharmaceutical side to a medical wellness type over-the-counter products to wellness to recreational. Yeah. And there's technology overlap in everything and distribution, marketing, et cetera. So... Uh, obviously, Israel. There's there's much innovation in Israel on the medical me- pharmaceutical side, and this always yeah. intrigued me. There's animals to it, um, so we we built our family office was very very dedicated to to you know to understand and to really uh, read through it and to understand the market and and what's the situation and what's the up, ups and downs and what what can we invest in and, and kind of put our money and help our entrepreneurs as well from you know our relationship standpoint to have other NBA players invest alongside us. Um, so one of the companies we founded in 2019 is Click, which is sublingual spray. Uh, there's four formulations, very cool, sleep, uh, go, um, uh, chill, and restore. That's some sort of a pre- after-practice type workouts. Oh, cool. And this, this is some of the things that, you know, were important for us to kind of bring an innovation technology into the industry. We're doing, you know, B2C distribution platforms. We're doing some stuff on the pharmaceutical side for humans on the synthetic side of cannabis, which I think going to be uh, life changing to the industry. Uh, animals is, uh, is very important for us. I have a dog. We've always been around dogs and cats. And, and yeah. We have our company that is, is kind of invested into finding solutions for pain with animals uh, as an API, as, as a form of uh, cool. active pharmaceutical ingredient. So all these things are very important for us. So we talk about tech transfer, right? And we're always looking for bridges. Do you see yourself as a bridge kind of um, taking that the, the Israeli uh, innovation hub that it is and bringing it over and exposing it to your friends on the U.S. side, folks, you know, with Absolutely. deeper pockets? Absolutely. Um, this is something that, you know, I, I think one of the, the hardest things for Israeli startups Obviously, there's been amazing success over the last couple of years, 10 years or so, as an iTech community, um, but also the bridge to the U.S. and to connect with the right distributors, technology platform, et cetera. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful and, and really happy to be in that position that, you know, thank God I made many, many good friends and, and relationship over the years. It was always from from a learning perspective, I always wanted to kind of, you know, the guys sitting court sides are, are more uh, experienced than us. Most of the time have more money than, than even the players playing. Right. But to go out and reach out and, and, and learn and ask questions, how is it to raise a fund? What is what are you looking for in a SaaS company? You know, what, what are some of the you know advantages you have and all that sort of stuff. So I've made great relationship with, you know, amazing f- friends. And now I call them friends, but also mentors of mine that uh, are willing to take the time and, and educate me, but also help me and kind of help my companies that I bring to the U.S. and kind of shed that bridge. 
So you said take the time. I, that's got to be my next question is how, how do you have the time you're playing 80, 90 games a year? You're on the road <laughs> th- three nights a week playing ball. How, how do you manage to juggle all of this? Uh, it's a good question. You know, um, I, I find it really interesting. You know, I'm, I'm I, I like it. I, I enjoy having a conversation and learn something new. My whole life I've been so dedicated into the game of basketball, um, but there's a whole world out there and many things you can learn. And, and that excites me. You know, some guys, go home and rather read a book or play video games or spend some time with their families, which I spend a lot of time with my family as well. But on my free time, I also like to, you know, give a call to one of my buddies who, you know, is a CEO of a a large uh, publicly traded company and ask him some question about the business and the thesis and, and what some of the things they do and learn and hopefully have that experience and kind of transfer it over to the next generation and kind of be some, some somewhat of a, of an educator as well. So I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. So I find time. Has it been interesting for you to see the evolution, how from when you first got to the league and how marijuana was more of a taboo subject to now where leagues are almost embracing it and, and, and opening their arms to it um, for recuperation and things like that? Oh, absolutely. I think the league has changed from the basketball perspective. When I got traded, when I got drafted, it was, I remember our pre-draft workouts were one-on-one post uh, back to the right. basket type workouts. And today guys are shooting threes and, and that, that's most of the workout, right? So the game has changed, but also off the court, right? I, I truly think that clinical studies and everything that within the industry is still not where it needs to be. I think there's much science and pharmaceutical exp- expertise needs to be uh, into the industry, but I think it's happening. Uh, obviously, the federal legalization that hopefully is around the corner will embrace that and push that forward, having the large pharma companies kind of getting into active yeah. research, which is very important for the industry. But for us players, you know, guys over the years, you know, one of our investors in Click, Larry Sanders, and he's battled, you know, some some for many years, with the league and some other organization to to make that acceptable and now guys are having that opportunity i know many guys that you know obviously will keep that private but they use cannabis and cbd yeah. and, and all sorts of stuff for sleep and for pain and for anti-inflammatory which which is great you know it's much better than you know having all these sorts of headsets right and and so um i think there's ways to go but uh, also it's it's very it's very great that it's happening already are there any um, tech companies that uh, you didn't get to mention in your opening salvo that you want to put on people's radar now while you have the audience? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been involved with a very couple of very cool companies. One of the companies called Day Two. Day Two is uh, um, I've, I'm, I invested with them in 2017, right before I signed with the Warriors. Um, they do a very cool microbiome study, um, and I think the microbiome into the wellness world is very up and coming. Um, mm-hmm. There's much thing we don't know about our gut and our microbiome, and uh, I think the next uh, wellness revolution might come from some of the studies they've done, right? Their research is amazing with the Weizmann Institute. The, the CEO is great. Yeah. Uh, uh, a woman named Lee Segal, she's great. And the research is great. So um honored to be a part in this ecosystem and to be an investor and to, to help them hopefully make that bridge to the U.S. and some of the relationships I've made over the years. And it's great. Cool. Um, we have a couple of minutes. I want to make sure everyone knows about your pod. I heard you're podcasting these days. Uh, yeah. I want to get more people listening. I want to get that ad revenue cranking up for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. So I started my podcast about a year ago in, in uh, May of, of last year. I, it was literally during the first couple couple weeks of, of COVID and people were at home. And I was thinking with my wife, how can we uh, be out there and kind of put smiles on people's faces?
Um, from my perspective, um, there's a Jewish uh, theme we call Kiddush Hashem, someone who sanctifies the name of God. And I don't think there's anyone out there that embodies uh, Kiddush Hashem more than, than Omri. He is someone that Israel, the Jewish people all should be proud of. He's an amazing uh, role model. And uh, it was really an honor to, to have Omri on. Thanks, everybody.